and welcome to this week's video of about symbiosis. It's spelled S Y M B I O S I S. Symbiosis. And Today I'm going to show you what a symbiosis is. So it's where here I have explained what symbiosis is. Symbiosis is when two animals work together. One animal helps one and the other animal helps the other one back. Sometimes there are more than two animals in a symbiotic relationship. Like they're like the slots. There's slots, fungi, algae and moths in that symbiotic relationship. There are three main types of symbiosis. Today I'm going to show you about the main one but there is three main types the one we are focusing on today is mutualism mutualism is when animal one helps animal two and animal two helps animal one so it's there that's the what i just explained but then there's common cellism which is animal one um is happy but animal two is kind of unaffected like for an example a whale with the barnacles on it the barnacles like they get to live on the whale's back but the whale doesn't feel anything really so that's commonalism then parasitism this is which this one is when animal one is happy but animal two is harmed or upset like a dog and a flea the flea gets to suck on the dog's blood and stuff but the dog gets itchy and sad and stuff like mosquitoes and people so today i'm going to be talking about mutualism and the first one we will talk about is clownfish and sea anemones Clownfish and sea anemones have a mutualistic um, symbiotic relationship. The clownfish cleans the sea anemone's tentacles and draws in prey for the sea anemone and offers nitrogen, which the anemone needs. But then the anemone gives the clownfish a home and protection because these little tentacles um, can hurt predators. I think they give a shock to any predator that comes near and the clownfish are immune to that sting. Again, they're amazing pictures you've drawn, darling. The next um, symbiotic relationship is bees and flowers. The bees pollinate the flowers and in return, the flowers give the bees stuff to eat and things to give um, the bees in their colony and things like that. That's one of the basic ones. Then another one, I, I added the house because it's in someone's garden. It nearly looks a bit like my garden. We have lots of flowers and weeds <laughs> probably more weeds <laughs> no we don't <laughs> aren't dandelions weeds we have lots of them that's just when we don't cut the grass i don't see any so anyways i got distracted like always the amount of likes this video gets that means the amount of times i get distracted so now we're on to the rhino and the oxpecker I think my mommy really likes this oh, picture gosh. I drew of the rhinos with the oxpeckers. You might be wondering, where is the oxpecker? What is an oxpecker? Well, they're the tiny little birds that are on the rhinos' backs. 
So and tell us about them, Joseph. So oxpeckers, they feed on the parasites and bugs um, that live on the rhino's skin. And similar to the crocodile, actually, birds clean the crocodile's teeth, but I didn't do that one today. Really, it's not just rhinos, it's any grazing animal like gazelle, uh, elephants, zebras, stuff like that. So they just, stuff like that. And they also, the uh, oxpecker warns the rhino or other animal they're riding on to, they they warn the animal if there's danger coming because, like they're sitting on top of their back, and or ear. And they're birds, so they have yeah. great eyesight. And... So, so the rhino gets a pest control, and the oxpecker, um, well the rhino gets pest control and it gets warned when there's danger coming, and. Um, the hawkspecker gets to eat. The hawkspecker gets a free meal and a free ride, I guess. So now we're on to the shark and the remora. Oh, it's so good. This is a lemon shark. You, you can probably tell why it's called a lemon shark with its yellowish color. So the remoras, which are these little fish that have these suction cup things almost on the top of their head that allows them to stick to a shark or a whale or a whale shark. I always get confused, is it a whale or is it a shark? So the remoras, they get to ride around the sea and they get um, they eat the leftovers from the shark. So the shark eats one of them tunas in the picture and then they just take some of the leftover bits from the tuna that the shark ate. They're kind of the cleanup crew afterwards. And they also sometimes clean inside the shark's mouth and on its skin. So this, the shark gets pest control and yeah, it gets pest control, and then the remoras, they get a free ride around the ocean, and they get some leftovers and parasites off the shark's skin. Next, we're on to the spider crab and the algae. So, the spider crab is a really big type of crab, and algae is this type of stuff that grows on some animals, even sloths. And sometimes and the algae gets a good home to live on this crab but the crab gets camouflage from this green coloring so predators won't try to eat it it gets camouflage the spider crab gets camouflage and the algae gets a good home to live on win-win so now we're on to and um, fungi and algae and moths. I love sloths. You, it, I love them so much. And I, in my sloth video, I even said sometimes algae grows on sloths' backs. So when the sloth comes down to go, go to the toilet, um, it, some moth caterpillars and other little things crawl onto its back and fur and they get a good home to thrive in in this sloth's fur because sloth's fur is almost like a completely new habitat so many things live in it it's like there's savannas jungles oceans and sloth's fur <laughs> they're some of the habitats and the sloth also, just like the spider crab from the algae and fungi, it gets camouflage from things like harpy eagles. Harpy eagles. They try to eat my best favorite animal sloths. I think the harpy eagle would eat the sloth and the... Yeah. Everything else. Yeah. Harpy eagles are cool and all, and they're, they're pretty cool, but they eat sloths and monkeys. <laughs> so now we're on to ants. Did you want to look at the back and see? Have you forgotten any of your points? Now we're on to ants and aphids. An aphid is a little green thing. They're aphids. Um, 
They're very small little things. Oh, that's not very small. Oh, this is a toy. Super sized one. If, if it was real sized aphid, it would be actually the size oh, okay. of tiny. Okay. There are these little things and that's probably the size they are compared to an ant. So ants and aphids is one of the most interesting symbiotic relationships I think I'm going to talk about today. It's very interesting. It's like a farming kind of. So how it works is that ants feed and protect the aphids from predators and feed them good food. And then the aphids, they like secrete this kind of liquid sap stuff for the ants to eat. It's almost like a cow. The farmer feeds and protects his cow and then the cow gives the farmer milk. Wow. It's very interesting and cool. It's ants are so smart. They've got so many cool ways to live. I love ants, apart from the time they bit me. <laughs> Once in summertime, I was in the garden and they went all over my leg and started biting me. Biting, not biting. <laughs> what am I, British? Something's in my eye. So that's it for this very good symbiotic relationships video. I hope you learned something new about symbiosis today. I think symbiosis is very interesting and cool. I also think my new setup is very cool and interesting. I think it's a nice setup, very clean, tidy. And I'll see you in next week's video. If you have a suggestion, you can let me know because you know I always like my um, my friends giving me nice suggestions for my videos and this video idea was suggested by Cormac and Fiona. Cormac, the same person who made that epic thing for me um, with my logo and all the clips. So that's it for this video. Like and subscribe and touch the bell. And I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Happy New Year. Happy New Year Day 2022.